What's up, Central Illinois? You know what you all need? Y'all need some CIBL podcast swag. And thanks to our newest sponsor, Jedco Sales, you can now find our swag at CIBLmerch.com. You can find t-shirts, sweatshirts, polos, hats, and more, all classically adorned with our famous CIBL podcast logo. If you want to represent and support your favorite podcast, check out CIBLmerch.com. That's C-I-B-L-M-E-R-C-H.com. If you like our store, you can also build your very own business swag store with the help of Jedco Sales in Effingham, Illinois. Jedco is owned by previous CIBL guests, Andrew and Laren Dial. They've set up a special discount offer for CIBL guests and listeners to set up your very own custom branded swag store. You can now offer branded apparel to your employees, customers, and fans, and Jedco will fulfill all the orders for you. Contact Jedco at sales at jedcosales.com. That's sales at J-E-D-C-O sales.com and tell them that Garrett and Derek sent you. Let Jedco help you get noticed. Welcome to the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, where business owners, thought leaders, and community champions from across Central Illinois come to share their story. The Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. Anything less would be uncivilized. Ooh, what's up, Central Illinois? I'm Derek Hayden. I'm here with Garrett Homer. We are your hosts for the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, powered by Zambu. Zambu is a delicious grapefruit or wild berry vodka-based spirit infused with a Brazilian buzz button. It's smooth, tasty, and leaves you with a signature tingle. Learn more at ZambuLiquors.com. Zambu, taste the tingle. All right, Central Illinois, today's guest is the owner of... Let me pull up his website, the Selling selling with Dignity. You can find him at sellingwithdignity.com. Ladies and gents of Central Illinois, please welcome Harry Spate. How are you doing, Harry? I am doing great. What's a good word, Derek? Good to see you here. Awesome. We're we're pumped to have you, Harry. We, we, uh, our listeners don't know this, but we had technical dif- difficulties the first time we tried to record with you, and then I just had more technical difficulties trying to get myself on camera and my microphone work and so i have a feeling that third time's the charm right <laughs> we're, uh, we're we're blessed we're gonna do just great i'm sure awesome well thanks for joining us here we're pumped to have you and hear your story but before we do that we're gonna kick it to garrett and run you through our speed round questions all right sounds gotcha. great. quite possibly the toughest six questions that you've ever answered in your life so if you're ready we'll kick it off the first concert that you ever attended Jethro Tull back <laughs> nice. in the mid seventies. Nice. Aqualung nice. baby. <laughs> I think Jethro Tull may be a first on the show that we have heard as an answer, Derek. That's I think so. <laughs> Favorite movie. Oh, it's gotta be Braveheart. Good one. Favorite ice cream flavor. Just chocolate chip. I'm a simple guy. There you go. Favorite or I'm sorry. Are you a iPhone or Android guy? iPhone. Favorite social media platform? LinkedIn. Gotcha. And this is typically where we will ask visit or guests that are from our area why they like Central Illinois. So tell us a little bit about your area and, and why you're there. All right. I am in Central Florida, very close to Central Illinois. Yeah. Uh, just the states are about a thousand miles apart. Uh, what we have here in Central Florida are hills. So for those of you who think Florida is nothing but swamp land, Central Florida has orange groves that are now being destroyed for uh, nice homes where I can live. And there's hills that go all the way up to an elevation. It's not quite like the Rockies or the Carolinas, but we get up to a couple of hundred feet. (laughs) And I know this is exciting for many. So we love love the hills. They're still capped in the summer sometimes. 200 feet above sea level. Watch out, folks. (laughs) <laughs> no, that's awesome. uh, yes well great harry at this point this is where we'll turn the mic over to you you uh tell us your story take us as far back as you'd like bring us up to speed with what you got going on today and share anything between that you'd like to share all right cool all right so uh i'll start with the present like right now i am the founder of selling with dignity which we are a sales coaching uh, platform. So we really try to help small business owners to grow their sales, 
especially with people who don't want to be viewed as salespeople. This is a real challenge for many small businesses and people who left corporate who are starting their second career and they say, well, I've, I wanna take what I've learned and build a business out of that. The last thing these folks wanna do is sell. And so many of them will say things like, I'm really good at my job, but I suck at selling or sales is gross or I'm not a salesperson. So they've talked themselves out of this. I see you guys nodding. You might've heard this once or twice <laughs> and they talk themselves out of it before they even start. So I can relate to this and that's why I have my business doing this is because prior to this, I've been in the corporate sales, a uh, small company, Fortune 500, name begins with X. They sold a lot of copiers over the years. <laughs> Uh, we'll leave them unnamed though, but you can figure it out. But prior to that, I did mission work. Okay. So doing the mission work and the humanitarian, it was all about serving, helping people out. And when we left that, we spent a couple of years in the Dominican Republic. Um, we did some work in uh, Germany, chipped away at the Berlin Wall, for those of you who remember that. And we were in St. Petersburg, not Florida, but Russia, right after it was uh, changed the name from Leningrad. I mean, we're going back, it was like 30 years ago. It seems like 300 years ago. So we had the adventurous bug in us. We went and said, uh, let's go try living, doing this on a tropical island. And that led us to the Dominican Republic. And we learned a ton about serving people, learning a language, just understanding that we, we don't have all the answers here in the United States. It's a great country, but the things you can learn by traveling is hospitality, seeing what, you know, what real wealth is, is all about relationships. So as we were leaving that, I had to figure out what I was going to do to earn an income. And I had a small janitorial business prior to the DR. We, I sold that business so we could live for a couple of years uh, without working and just focus on serving. So few people told me I'd be pretty good at sales. I didn't really understand sales, but for those of you who are longtime salespeople, you might've heard of the book, uh, The Greatest Salesman in the World. That was written by Og Mandino in the 60s. And I found that book at my sister's home and they had it in a bookcase. I read it. It's like sales. Wow. This is, it's a greeting each day with love in your heart, persistence, you know, treating people well. It's like, I can do this. So it wasn't easy to get a sales job, by the way. I had a great resume, a uh, missionary and uh, ran a janitorial business. So people, <laughs> you know, going into sales organizations, if they would see me, I was quickly exposed for having zero experience and this idea of I can learn, I'm a hard worker. Uh, not, not a lot of people wanted to take a chance on me, but I had a friend who was in the business selling copiers and he said, look, he gave me a bunch of places to interview, which that didn't work out. And he says, why don't you just come here and meet with, my, with the owner and I met with the owner and I, my friend must have said enough, enough kind things about me. So I got the job, right? So here I was uh, riding around on a motorcycle in the Dominican Republic a few months earlier, complete freedom, <laughs> moved into a sales bullpen. So if you're familiar with movies like The Wolf of Wall Street, oh, yeah. uh -huh. right? Boiler Room, yeah. this rings a bell. You're like shoulder to shoulder. It's not only do you hear the person next to you speaking, you hear them breathing. <laughs> okay, yep. and this was my new world. And I went, what did I get myself into? I am the servant-minded individual. Everything about this was closing business. Pressure, I mean... I didn't, I hadn't, I hadn't sworn, right? The, you know, using curse words since <laughs> I was in high school, right? And then I got into this whole mission, religious thing. And so I didn't even, I haven't, I didn't swear for like almost 20 years. 
So I was in my mid thirties. I was around a bunch of 22 year olds Uh who were just out of college, tons of testosterone. And I was not the fish out of water. I was the missionary in a bullpen. (laughs) Complete craziness. That's on a t-shirt somewhere. Yeah. That's how a good joke starts, right? Oh my goodness. That's a great idea. (laughs) So for those who don't know what this looks like, right? You got the room filled with testosterone and on each end of the room, there's about 20 of us. We're big white boards. There's a manager for each end and 10 names on each per se. I, and next to our names was the business we were writing. Uh, my name is on the bottom. And for several months, I had that nice round goose egg <laughs> and I hear zeros are not good in sales. <laughs> so I was eventually written up, believe it or not. And they're, they're giving me like, you gotta, you gotta turn this around. I'm going to give you 30 days, but they, they're really nice. And I was learning. And what I was doing throughout this whole process was I was laying a foundation. I was talking to a lot of people. I was selling a high ticket item. I was not, I didn't have any current accounts. It was all net new. It was a new technology at the time, which was color printers in the mid nineties, which were, it was new people. I mean, this is not a thing. So, I mean, I was selling these things from $20,000 up to $60,000. And it's not like everybody needed one of these, right? So wow. you had to, I had a lot mm-hmm. to learn, but I was building relationships within the team. So as things started to unfold, I started to get some leads and things started to happen And funny story, I had an account that uh, was really interested. We did the puppy dog clothes, right? We let them test drive the equipment. (laughs) But the company I was with was super. They're giving me all kinds of opportunities to succeed. And I just felt like I was going to go over the top on the customer service. And I just, I visited these people every day, made sure they were happy. I learned a ton. I, you know, I didn't have the answers, but I would get answers. And so I was saying, if I, the best thing I can do is do the customer service. I'll just be the best customer service sales-minded individual there is, which led into my whole selling with dignity, which is a servant-minded selling. The buyer finally had to ask, he said, Harry, what do we need to do to get this thing? And I went, uh, I got to make a call because right? I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even know what the paperwork looked like. So anyway, that led to that sale and then things started on had to really happen and take off in a couple of years. I moved to Washington, DC. I had to start all over again. I had similar challenges for the first year, but I built a great business in Washington, DC. I got promoted to uh, vice president of sales I was two blocks from the White House. And here I was inside of 10 years, went from missionary to leading a, you know, VP of sales for sales, multiple sales teams in Washington, D.C. It was like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> and it was all based on this service mentality uh, and, you know, listening, empathy, you know, taking pressure off of people, taking pressure off. People love to work with me. Other sales reps from other teams said, we want to be on your team because we love your attitude. You have fun. And I just didn't, I didn't have any pressure because I was living the dream, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't really buy into it. It's like, we're going to die if we don't make our number. It's like, no, I lived in a third world country that this is not terrible. Right. We still have nice homes. We have nice (laughs) cars. We miss our number for a quarter is not the end of the world. And so I just with that attitude, the business flowed. People loved to work on me and work with me. And I fell on the sword when we didn't make the number. I never played the team. So, again, all service minded. So that I finally, after, you know, 10 plus years of doing that, um, moved to Florida and during COVID, you know, I had a lot of time to think. I was reading uh, Think and Grow Rich. If you haven't heard of that book, I mean, no. you guys are nodding, but all <laughs> listeners, you need to read Think and Grow Rich. That will get the gears turning. And in, through that process, I was thinking, what can I do? And one day, uh, the voice spoke to me and said, you need to write the book you were thinking about. So I immediately went to my computer and started writing 
uh, an outline for selling with dignity. And from there, uh, for the past couple of years, I've been helping small businesses to grow their sales. And that's the story, the Reader's Digest version. <laughs> Very cool. That's a great one, man. That's awesome. Well, you probably noticed what Garrett and I kind of um, both nodded pretty heavily on was that <laughs> lots no one, of nodding and lots yeah, of no, smiling. So yeah, you can't wait. No to one, hear. everyone discounts selling before they actually try to sell. Yeah. Like everybody's, well, I'm just not cut out for selling. I'm just, I'm not a salesperson. Oh, I don't. That's too high pressure for me before anyone ever gives it a shot or even tries to do it. Um, so that's the thing that I was like, no one sells until you actually try to sell. I mean, correct. I, you, there's two ways to think of it. You sell in everything you do, but like for a job or for, you know, no one goes into a sales job knowing what they're doing. So we, Garrett and I talk to people all the time where we feel like they maybe have the ability to do it. And they say the same thing. Ah, I don't, it's not for me. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Harry, can you talk a little bit about when you hear people say that, like how you, I hate to say talk them off a ledge, but how, what you say to them? <laughs> oh, yeah. I so relate to this. Uh, yeah. I tell people they've been selling all their life. It's like your yeah. first sale is when you came out of the womb and you said, I need my mama. And mm -hmm. uh, that was, you know, it's like when you think about it, everything we do in life, it's like if it's you're persuading, you're trying to convince people, you're trying to sell your ideas, your concepts, your desires. We've been doing that since infancy. Yeah. And then when we get jobs or, you know, we're trying to get promoted, it's all selling folks. Yeah. So when you say you're not good at it, it's just like, well, how'd you get this far in life? Because yeah. you've been yeah. selling, now you're selling yourself. So mm -hmm. stop that and sell yourself on the good stuff. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Typically. Life is one big negotiation, right? Yeah. And I mean, it's that's just, cool. and it all starts with the questions that you ask. Yeah. I mean, totally. It's yeah. uh yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. The, the one term you used uh, towards the end of when you were talking was empathy. Yeah. Mm. And uh, a book that Garrett and I pushed pretty hard on this podcast is um, never split the difference by Chris mm. Voss. Mm -hmm. And he uses tactical empathy um, yes. to get people to open up, you know, about their situation to gain more information from the client or prospect. Um, so Tell us a little bit about how you use empathy and oh, your tactics. My goodness. I did not expect this conversation. So <laughs> empathy is empathy is a superpower. Listening is a superpower in sales. It's not, in my opinion, you've got to have a pitch. You got to understand what you're selling, but you lead with empathy. You lead with listening. So I just put out a post or a, You've heard of overcoming objections. You guys are a couple of sales guys and people do this all the time. They said, well, you got to, when someone says this, you need to say that. They say this, you say that and so forth, right? So your price is too high. We've got a response. Uh, I'm looking at the competition. We got a response. Uh, I'm not ready to do this. We got a response. You get the idea. So what we have are, corn, what is the word? Canned responses. They're automatic. Yep. And if I could go back and tell a quick story, I had a, one of my sales reps at the time brought me into an account that was thinking of leaving us. And it was like a six figure account in the copier space. That's a significant deal. And I nailed it. I mean, I was just oh, so good. I mean, I overcome every objection the guy could raise. I was, I was masterful. And I'm high-fiving the rep. It's like, we got that deal, dude. It is locked. I get, the rep gets a call. He says, uh, Harry, they're, uh, the guy decided he, they're going somewhere else. I'm like, what? He says, yeah, he didn't like you. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then I went, that, and I might have cursed. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I might have cursed at the time. But then I reflected. And I see, because you always want to do this in sales. You always want to look in the mirror and say, what could I have done differently? And I thought I had an answer and all oh, yeah, the rep said, this helped me too. Cause he said, the guy said, you had an answer for everything. And I'm like, well, you're supposed to have an answer for everything. But then I realized, right. As I reflected on that, that my answers were all canned answers. There was no empathy. There was no, wow. 
I can't believe you're going through that. Or well, how did you feel? Or what was going through your mind? And you start asking questions like this and you build trust this way. Mm-hmm. So I, from that point on, I really let go of being the best uh, overcomer of sales objections. Mm-hmm. I used to be great at it. And then it's just like that stuff doesn't matter. It's the relationship that matters. It's the trust yeah. and showing that you're on the same side of the table, which I, I was on the opposite type, side. You have the problem. I'm going to fix it. You have the problem. And it's like, I was a doctor with absolutely no bedside manner. It's sure. pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. thankfully I learned from that. So that would be number one. If that uh, answers your question and, oh, you know, that's great. 7,000 words or less. No, that's great. Well, I'm going to guess that you've probably read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Uh, Yes, that's right behind me. Yeah. Yes. And I can remember reading, you know, when reading that book and he's at a party with his wife, I believe it was, and he didn't even want to go to the party. We didn't want to be at the party and he left and everybody's telling him he's the best conversationalist in the room. And he's like, I barely spoke 10 words, right. you know, just by listening. And that's what you're right. I mean, sales is listening and, and, and getting them to understand and being on their side, not the company side, but if they feel like you're, they are, you are on their side, it changes everything. It so does. Yeah. It's, it's again, it's the, like that book is classic, right? And it's another yeah. highly recommended book. If you haven't read it, we're taught all our lives, how to speak, how to present, right. How to make our point. Who of us has been taught a class in how to listen? Right. What, what class did we go to in school? It was <laughs> like, uh, this is where you got to learn to listen. This is, you know, where I may have been told to it? shut up and listen a lot yeah, when I was yeah, in school, but, <laughs> but not how <laughs> shut up and listen all the time. Absolutely. Not. That was me too. <laughs> we, we would have done well. We were, the three of us were in the back of the room in the back right. of the class <laughs> chatting all the time, making fun of people being oh. told to shut up and listen. Uh, yeah, uh, for sure. For oh sure. yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned it in your, in your, opening here and it's sitting over looks like over your left shoulder tell us a little bit about your book yeah the book is uh it's really all about human psychology in sales even though i am not a psychologist i don't pretend to be one i didn't stay at a holiday inn last night (laughs) this book is it really goes into the the psychology of of the sale and it starts with your own my with mindset, right? Like the first thing is, is like you, you might say you're not cut out for sales. Well, the world does not need all of us to be salespeople. And so I really throw it out to people. It's like, you get to make the choice. And if you don't want to, that's fine. Be a fireman or the world needs firemen. Right. We need ambulance drivers. We need those people. But if you're running a business, you can't do it without a sale. Right. The Mm -hmm. sale has to happen. You have to figure it out. And so I go through in the book uh, with 25 different ways of whether it be listening, showing empathy, storytelling, using your sense of humor, you name it, planning. Everything about it. Right. The vision affirmations. It's all to help the person who has not been in sales to sell. And if you've been in sales and you're a good closer and you write a ton of business, you're probably not going to be happy with this book because I am the anti salesperson <laughs> that's selling, right? I'm the person mm-hmm. that did things differently and still sold and still made a nice living over the years. So for those who are struggling in sales, know they would love to be better without being pushy. This book's for you. Very so cool. tell us a little bit about your courses and, you know, do you have yourself, you said small to medium sized businesses, correct? Yep. Do you have an employee range that you'd like to work with? You know, what kind of radius do you cover, you know, as far as nationwide? Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. I mean, so I'll go anywhere in the country, in the U S okay. um, and a lot of that is now done on uh, zoom, zoom using yeah. technology, of <laughs> course. Uh the size of the company is typically 10 people or fewer on the sales team. Okay. And people who are, you know, the challenges that I just described, they're not writing business. They might have that first appointment. They get ghosted. These are all very simple problems to fix. And the quick answer for that is, because I give away secrets, is flip the script 
make it about the other person, not about what you're selling. Sure. And mm -hmm. when you learn about what the other person needs and you ask questions about their business and you listen and you think about how can I serve that person? Can I give them a referral? Can I connect them with somebody? Your whole demeanor changes instead of saying, how am I going to make the sale? Because people don't necessarily want to be sold to anymore. It's just, unless they're in the market for something, yep. mm -hmm. they don't want to be sold. No, nope. right? they need a solution most of the time, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And your product may not be the answer at the time. Sure. But this is a great time to develop the trust. And, you know, when you're listening, you can maybe read, share an article. You can talk to someone that knows that problem. You might have someone in your community or in your network. You say, you guys need to chat and uh, we'll pick up what we do at another time because this is your priority. Yeah. It's okay, mm -hmm. right? It's we're yeah. in business for the long haul, not, you know, if it doesn't happen this month, there's other months down the road. Sure. I hear. Very cool. Very cool. And it also looks like you have your own podcast as well. Tell us a little bit about the podcast. Yeah. The podcast is called sales made easy. It's uh, everywhere. Um, and that the, the goal right there is in the title, but I basically interview people who are running successful businesses or sales experts to just provide guidance for others. So all kinds of topics related to, from mindset, how to use social media, you know, sales psychology, you name it. I've had a couple of great sales authors. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> Lee Sauls is one okay. who uh, wrote uh, Sales Differentiation and um, Sell Different, a couple of great books. And James Muir, who wrote The Perfect Close. Uh, those are a couple of great sales episodes from people who think a little bit like me, um, but, but they do. Uh, they're great, uh, great individuals as well. Gotcha. Very cool. I yeah. do have a quick a nope. quick question about the book, Harry. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of people on, not a lot, a handful of people we've had on the show have written their own books. We always want to know, did you self-publish that or did you hire a publisher? What was your process as you wrote a book? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So when I started writing, I had no idea where it was going to end mm -hmm. and how it was going to end. So the, the just for the tips, for those who are thinking of writing a book, just start writing. Don't mm -hmm. overthink it. It will all come together. The how will come together and it will be who. Right. So you'll find the people who will help you with the how. So with me, I am self-published, but I used a company called Motivation Champs. Dominic Damaski is a good friend of mine now. Um, and they, they have a great organization, but they, he's helped a ton of authors like me. We own all of our content, which okay. is very different. As I shopped around, I realized I needed to buy books at higher prices I didn't own all of the content with Dominic and Motivation Champs. It's all mine. He lets me buy the books at wholesale. So, and, you know, so there's profit in the sale of the books and so forth. So, gotcha. Yeah. That's the way to do it, in my opinion. So, Very for cool. some of our listeners out there that may be wanting to reach out to you to kind of discuss what the process, you know, looks like if they were interested in working with you, tell us a little bit about what your process looks like if somebody reached out to you. Yeah. The first thing we do is we have a conversation and, you know, I am, I'm all about serving. So I, if someone lands on my calendar, I'm going to look up that person, research them, research the company. I'll go to their website. So I'm going to be informed. I'm not going to go, who are you? Right. I'm going to be informed and I'm going to provide incredible value. Uh, if you look at my testimonials on LinkedIn, People I have one or two conversations with are writing some of these testimonies down because they just have been knocked out of the park with what I provide. It's not like I'm great. It's, it's all about listening and understanding what people really want and solving some problems relatively quickly. And if you have others on the team that need some guidance and, uh, you know, we'll figure it out. I mean, it's like, let's have the conversation first. That can be done. I have a very simple call to action. It is Harry Chat. Okay. I came up with this myself, guys. Brilliant. I know. <laughs> but my name, Harry, followed by C-H-A-T. 
get.com gets you to my calendar and we have a no there we go there we go conversation <laughs> does this still work <laughs> i hope it works Derek. <laughs> i'm looking I, I see the let's chat button on your website i've got it pulled up here looking at it and then it looks like for your book they can order your the book from your website or there are other places that individuals can find your book as well yeah so they can go to get it at amazon but uh, also on the book on the website under the book chapter you can uh page you can download a few chapters of the book nice and see if it's a fit gotcha harrychat.com worked for me yay <laughs> <laughs> i send everyone there with all of my tiktoks and youtubes and nice. yeah so i have a blast i don't know if any do you guys do any tiktok videos you know i, I watch them more than produce them yeah, yeah correct yeah, yeah. I think we've been talking about trying to do TikToks for what, two to three years now, Derek. Yeah. And I, I don't want to say yep. we have, we have failed at that, but I guess I will say we have failed at doing more of that. I guess I've just spent too much time combing my hair. I don't know. Oh. But uh, <laughs> we, I don't know what our excuse is going to continue to be at this present point, but we probably yeah. need to do more for sure. All right, I'm older than you guys. <laughs> and I, if I can do this as the old guy, yeah, you young punks can definitely give it a try. So I've been using, doing tiktok videos now i think i am about close to 90 days straight nice oh wow of, cool uh, yeah and it, it's a blast i because you can record them i record a week's or two weeks of videos inside of an hour 15 sure, yeah. second yeah. videos um and it's just it's easy to put them out there on youtube tiktok or tiktok youtube instagram and facebook you can literally put out somewhere around 40 posts a week yeah. using one video or each day and you gotcha. record those ahead of time so yeah very cool yeah get get in the game guys yeah, come I on know. now <laughs> central illinois needs more of you yeah, i know i know we're just right in here in the middle of a cornfield we just don't know what we're doing i guess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome oh, well harry believe it or not we are getting close to the 30 minute mark before we wrap up is there any last words of advice or wisdom you'd like to share with salespeople out there? Yeah. I mean, I appreciate the question. The, the word of advice I would give is instead of thinking about closing business, think about how you can serve the person across from you. Sure. The business is going to come. And is that when you have that mindset shift, just think about serving the person. And sometimes it's going to be that person needs to be heard. H-E-A-R-D, not hurt, <laughs> but heard <laughs> because no one else is listening. Mm -hmm. And as a salesperson, you can totally differentiate yourself by becoming an expert listener. Read books on listening, watch videos on listening. There's a number of great experts on YouTube that talk about listening skills, showing empathy, tilting your head a little bit to show that you're a listener, mirroring, but people are going to warm up to you when you're a great listener. It's not about being an eloquent speaker, right? It's not about closing. The business will flow when people want to do business with you because of your relationship building skills. Great awesome. advice. Yep. Yep. We say that all the time to people who are new that you don't have to be a slick, you know, hardcore closer nice. to, to be in sales. It's, it's more of listening and understanding what situation they're in and then solving their problem. I love um, it. If, if you can solve it and if you can't yeah. move on to the next one and say, Hey, thanks for the meeting. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, Harry, what is the best place or are there multiple ways for people to reach you? Harry chat, baby. Harry chat. <laughs> chat. is the answer. Great. I like it. Well, for all you listeners out there, make sure you're subscribing to the CIBL podcast on your favorite podcast platform. While you're there, please leave us a review. It'd be greatly appreciated. You can also find us on social me media, mainly Facebook and LinkedIn. You can connect with Garrett and I there personally as well. Until next time, Harry, you've officially been civilized. Thanks this for coming to the show. Blast. This has been a blast, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Harry. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash CIBL podcast. You can also follow us on LinkedIn 
Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. It's the civilized thing to do. What's up, Central Illinois business owners? We know that insurance and employee benefits are one of the most expensive, confusing, and frustrating hurdles that you face in your business today. Garrett and I work with Central Illinois businesses to create insurance and risk management programs and employee benefit solutions that reduce risk, enhance your business, and maximize your profitability. Head to ciblinsurance.com to learn more about insurance solutions that are specifically designed for your Central Illinois businesses and to watch our educational videos about work comp, employee health insurance, commercial insurance, and other insurance products to help your business go to the next level. Go to ciblinsurance.com. We'll see you there.